What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. I know you guys have been waiting a while for this, so I'm not gonna make this too long. Just wanna run over something really, really quickly. For one, you could probably hear my voice, I'm a little congested, but you won't have to worry about hearing my voice too much in this video. We're gonna get straight to the running footage. I just wanted to go over my new battery strap, which I talked about in the last video. I got that new battery, which is taller than this one. You don't see it now because it's charging and my battery strap wouldn't work with it anymore. So I had to come up with a new solution. And this is what I came up with. You'll see some close-up shots here. It's really simple. It's just a Velcro normal battery strap that passes through the plastic sides of the chassis so that the battery fits in a normal spot, loops around, and pulls tight and holds it on there good. I was also able to shorten up the leads coming from the ESC since now I could turn the battery around and have the post face in the rear of the car. Get a little bit weight out of there, some unnecessary weight that was swinging around in the car. Only other thing to it is a 3D printed stop in the back. With just a battery strap, that battery could still move around a little bit. There was nothing to stop the battery from moving backwards in the car. So I just designed a little 3D printed part that holds the battery in place. The battery just butts up against it. It screws in the bottom of the chassis with two countersunk screws and it's ready to go honestly I feel like it holds even better than that old strap considering the old strap was 3d printed and I had one or two of them break on me this battery isn't going anywhere right now so once that other battery is done charging we're gonna get that drone up in the air for one and we're gonna go make some passes right now before we get started comment down below what's your guesses on top speed and best ET for today Well, the rain kind of caught me there. I'm sure you could see it's kind of cloudy out. So I don't know if we're gonna get too many more drone shots today. I don't wanna have the drone up in the air and the car running and it start raining on me. I'm hoping it'll pass quickly and we can get a couple more passes in though, but you can see this body's kind of shot here. I've noticed the car's pulling to the left a lot and I'm kind of thinking this is part of my issue. I can't find anything else that would be causing the car to pull left like that. So we're going to go back to the vet body today. I do have another body in the works for this car, but it's not ready yet. As soon as the rain passes and it dries up a little outside, we'll make some more passes, see if we can improve on those times. Several days later. So I decided instead of cutting in after every single run today and giving you an overview, I'd just wait till the end of the day and come back and do an overview of the entire day, all of the passes at once. The car did run really well today. Nothing changed much since the last video except for that new battery and the new battery strap which worked really well. The other thing that worked really well was the drone. I was really excited to get some drone shots of this thing going down the street and 
it's really really cool i like seeing from the top of there you can see a couple of times when the car spun out in the beginning you could see how it's moving down track i'm really really happy with the kind of shots i can get with that thing and i'm excited to get out there with the monster trucks as well but that's a different day let's talk about performance obviously those first couple shots you've seen today as well as the other day when it rained on me you can see in the beginning the car doesn't hook that well i'm struggling and having issues with getting the car to go straight off the line i believe that's a tire conditioning problem and i know i've talked about in the past that i kind of want to stay no prep and stay dry on the tires and don't want to use any tire prep but i'm thinking about looking into some tire conditioning I don't want any sticky stuff, no prep, but I do want to condition the tires. That way they're better set up to launch right at the beginning of the day. I don't have to get seven or eight passes in before the car's really hooking right. I've been doing a little research about tire conditioning, but let me know down in the comments below. How do you condition your tires? What have you seen online or heard about in person, whatever. I think that's my next step with this car is tire conditioning. As for actual speeds and ETs, the car kind of progressed as I went today. I was able to notice exactly where I could add more power in, where the car was kind of falling flat on its face and could use more power down track. I was able to do that with the performance analyzer actually. I had been looking at something but didn't quite know about it until I read about it on Reddit. Not sure if you could see my phone here, but if we come to the performance analyzer app and this will bring up my last pass when the battery was dying, but I ran a 271 at 55 miles an hour here. If you click this share button at the top, it'll give you a chance of an Excel or a screenshot. And I don't want to do a screenshot. I want to open up Excel. Now, if you have the Excel app downloaded on your phone like I do, you can open it up straight in Excel or you can email it to yourself. I'm going to open it up straight in Excel and you can see when it comes up here, I'll try to get you a close up shot of this. It gives you a second by second or I guess more of an incremental time of speed and acceleration. So I can see at 0.2 seconds, 0.4 seconds. So it basically gives you an idea of how the car is doing during the run. You can see my hardest acceleration was 2.09 at 0.6 seconds into the run. And after that, it just kind of died off. On the top end, I was only pulling 0.78 Gs, which that means I can maybe add in some turbo on the top end if my temps aren't getting too bad or I'm not pushing the motor to or the ESC to its limits. That is probably because the battery was just dying out, honestly. And some of my other passes, I think I saved one here. You can see I was pulling 1.7 Gs about a 1.8 seconds into the run. But towards the end there, at the 2.2 seconds, I was only pulling 0.71. So I'm still kind of topping out early. This was a better pass. You can see I hit 59 miles an hour. That's just a really cool trick I found. It helps with tuning a lot. Now, I don't have much more performance data for you other than that today because I tried something different. Being that I had the drone up in the air, my phone is what hooks up to the drone remote so that I could see what the drone sees. And while the drone's up in the air, I could exit the app to get to the performance analyzer app, but it's kind of sketchy not being able to really see the drone and not having good control of it doing that so i pulled up my tablet that i have the amazon fire tablet for tuning the drk and i downloaded the performance analyzer app on it thinking that i could just use that to read the data off of the analyzer after using it for like two or three passes i realized something was not right i don't know if it's not calibrated right or what the third pass read 99 miles an hour and that is way off this car is not doing 99 miles an hour in 132 feet so i don't know what the issue was there that's why the last couple passes i just dropped the drone down and used my phone instead so i could see what i was running i ended up running the same as i was before 60 to 61 miles an hour those ets were a little slower i feel like i wasn't getting enough on the launch you might have heard in some of the early passes today that I had some slipper clutch slippage. I had to tighten that up a little bit. I hadn't set it last time when I replaced this spur gear, I guess. Other than that, 
I'm pretty happy with the car. Like I said, I wanna do some tire conditioning that way we don't get those squiggly launches anymore. No trouble off the line. And once we get tire conditioning down and I can maybe put a little more power down on the hit, maybe we'll start seeing closer to like a two flat or closer to like 65 miles an hour and we can get some more speed out of this thing, get some better passes. You might notice my front body mounts are gone. This is just a quick update for a future video. I'm working on a new front body mount. You might have seen over on Instagram that I'm working on painting a new body and it's just about done, but not covering it in this video. I don't want to drill the body post holes in the same spots as all my other bodies are. It's just in a bad location. So I'm gonna build probably a small front splitter here with some body posts on it. And then all of the bodies I use will end up having those holes in them. I know it's a bunch of holes in the body, but this body will be for looks. The older ones will just be for test passes and when I'm worried about crashing. <laughs> so I hope you enjoyed today's video. I'm sorry it took so long to get back to the drag racing content. It's been a whirlwind of things with batteries and weather and all kind of crazy stuff to begin the new year. But the car is looking promising. We're gonna do some tire work next and see what we can do. Make sure to leave a like on the video if you enjoyed. Subscribe if you wanna see more drag racing content. I've been getting a bunch of comments on the SCX24 build that I'm working on and that's actually what I'm going to work on as soon as I wrap up this video. So that'll be coming probably next week, if not really, really soon as well. So stay tuned for that. But as always, thanks again for watching. Peace.